Over the last few years, we have started to see a lot of insect resistance around the country. So today we wanted to focus on what are the different insecticide sites of action. Well, one of the scary things in our industry is there aren't a lot of new sites of action coming, whether it's in insecticides or in herbicides, and so we want to make sure we can maintain the ones that we've got and keep them viable. In most of the Midwest, it's just three. The pyrethroids, then the organophosphates, and then this group four, the neonicotinoids, that's a lot of them. But there's also another subcategory, 4C, the new transform. That's a lot different than the other group fours, but they're all still group four. And the thing is, when we talk about those neonics, you know what else is in group four? Nicotine. Nic Nicotine is really an insecticide. I mean, people talk all the time about smoking and how it can hurt you. Well, that's because you're pumping in insecticide into your body constantly every day. So obviously that's not a good thing. But the flip side of that is, all right, how harmful is nicotine just out in the environment? Let's say I get a tiny bit of exposure to it during planting season a couple times a year. Is that really going to hurt anything? Probably not much. So they're actually quite safe compared to some of the old insecticides that are now banned. What I do get concerned about, though, is the post-emerge use. We love the neonics for seed treatments. We just don't like to see them use post-emerge. Well, the main thing is we're concerned about safety to bees. There's been a lot of negative press, both in our country and around the world, about bees safety and injury potentially from insecticides. I'll say this, it's been way blown out of proportion. There's no question there are some issues going on in the bee community right now. There are some issues affecting colony health and one of the big ones there has been disease. But insecticides when they're used... Disease and mites and yes, there are a number of things besides insecticides. Insecticides when they're used post-emerge put us at risk for negatively impacting bees because most of these insecticides if not all of them will kill bees if they come in direct contact. So we have to to be careful. Yeah, but the problem is with these neonics, they're not strong enough a lot of times to kill the bee instantly. If it did, it wouldn't be quite as big a deal. But what can happen is the bee can bring some of that neonic back to the hive and then kill the whole thing. That's where the real problem is. So what we would encourage you to do is continue to use the neonics, things like Gaucho, Poncho, Cruiser as seed treatments. That's where they're great. That's where they have very little risk of ever hurting any bees. And stop using them post-emerge so we can save that chemistry. The EPA is looking at this right now. Europe has already banned this family of chemistry. The state of Oregon has banned it. We don't want to see a ban across the U.S. because then we lose our only real insecticide choice in corn, in wheat, in soybeans for a seed treatment. It's the neonic family. That's all we've got. We can't afford to give up Poncho, Gaucho, and Cruiser. Okay, let's get back to that foliar application. And here's where I see some issues because let's talk about wheat, for example. It seems like every time we go across our wheat crop, it's, well, we've got a herbicide that needs to get sprayed and we need to put on some fertilizer and oh by the way we've got some bugs out there that need to get treated now I need to throw an insecticide too and and the same thing happens in soybeans and other crops where I say okay if I'm going to add that insecticide in it better be something that doesn't heat up my mix and make it burn my crop and so the pyrethroids get used just over and over again because they're pretty easy to mix with just about anything out there they're really inexpensive too. Yeah and they don't seem to hurt the crop even when they're mixed in with some other products but really we've got to find some way to start rotating chemistry. That new transform that we talked about, that's real good on aphids, but it doesn't harm a lot of the beneficial insects, including lady beetles. So we just encourage you, take a look at whatever insecticide you're using, try to mix up the sites of action, and like Darren said at the beginning, we just don't see a lot of new chemistries coming out. Yeah, there's spinosad and there's blackhawk and some of these things, but as long as you keep rotating sites of action as much as you can on your farm, hopefully resistance of insects isn't going to be an issue. Well, whether you have insecticide resistance or not, it's not going to make any difference when it comes to controlling our Weed of the Week. I'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up next.